Good evening. It took 18 years after his death before two of his killers were put behind bars. But tonight, the detective who built the case against Stephen Lawrence's killers has told Newsnight that inside the Met, some people never wanted a successful prosecution. Speaking exclusively to Newsnight for the first time since he retired, Clive Driscoll says he believes there were disruption tactics during his inquiry. And he also claims that when he was investigating child abuse that took place in the 1980s, he was moved from his post when he revealed suspects he wanted to investigate included politicians. Here's his story. Getting to the truth. Few criminal cases have done more to test that process than Stephen Lawrence's murder. When truth was obscured by mistakes or fear, trust in the police fell away. Crimes they just could not or would not resolve. The detective who convicted Lawrence's killers is now ready to reveal how obstacles were put in the way of his investigations. Some people did not want a successful prosecution. Tonight, he tells us how in that case and his inquiry into child abuse in 1980s Lambeth, barriers, even politics, appeared. At the time, I just felt that um, it was all too uncomfortable to a lot of people. In these most contentious of cases, has truth been a victim too? Clive Driscoll worked for the Met for more than three decades until just a few weeks ago. His detective work led finally to the successful convictions of Stephen Lawrence's killers. But what he describes as his apprenticeship for that politically charged case was perhaps just as contentious. And at that time, the detective's involvement had a very different outcome. In 1998, he worked in child protection and was moved to investigate allegations of child abuse in children's homes in Lambeth in South London, alleged to have taken place in the 1980s. But his lines of inquiry quickly proved just too awkward. There was a, a, a mistrust on both sides. It, it appeared that certainly that people didn't trust the Metropolitan Police Service and I think the, the Metropolitan Police Service possibly didn't trust some of the people that it was working with. A bit like young Stephen's investigation, I never felt there was a wall of silence. But whenever people spoke to you and shared their fears and their story about what they'd seen, it was almost on the proviso that, that they wouldn't make a statement and that they would be scared if you released who those people were that were talking for fear of reprisals. It was a very, very difficult climate for people to come forward in, but very bravely, in my opinion, they did come forward and I passed the names on that had been passed to me as potential suspects. When he revealed those names, including politicians, at a case meeting, he was taken off the investigation and subjected to a disciplinary. After discussing internally with the Metropolitan Police Service whether or not I should release certain information to Lambeth Council, which I hadn't done up to then, it was agreed um, by my senior management team that that's what I would do. And after I did disclose, because I did, I most certainly in a case conference disclosed suspects' names, 100%, that um, I was informed that that was inappropriate and that in fact that I would be moved uh, from my post. And that information included politicians' names as potential suspects? There was actually a mix. Um, there were certainly, some of the names were people that were locally working some people that were, if, if you like, working nationally. But there, was, there was quite a mix, really, because of um, it, it appeared that um, it was connected to other boroughs and other movement around the country. To be clear, when you say a mix, you mean some local political figures yeah, correct. Yes. and MPs. That's correct, yes. Do you fear that you were stopped from investigating those claims because you suspected more than one politician of being involved in child abuse? At the time, I just felt that um, it was all too uncomfortable 
to a lot of people. After Clive Driscoll moved, investigations continued to look at more than 20 children's homes and are still ongoing. There have been several convictions. The Met is now looking into his claims concerning his removal from the investigation and have called him to a meeting in Scotland Yard this week. Stephen ran crossing the road and he ran and eventually he died on the right hand side of Welford Road there. That experience made Clive Driscoll more determined to pursue the truth, ultimately in the Lawrence case, equally controversial. The Met's initial flawed attempts to find his killers in the weeks that followed his death got nowhere. We are in a position today where we have an opportunity to learn and we have an opportunity to maybe put right some of the wrongs that have come out in recent times. There was no doubt that there were mistakes made in this investigation and, and there was much debate about whether those mistakes were corrupt mistakes or incompetent mistakes. Prosecutors then didn't find enough evidence to charge anyone. The family's own private attempts to prosecute collapsed. Despite in 1999 a major inquiry where suspects had to give evidence and the first investigation was found to be flawed, in 2004, again, the CPS ruled out another trial. In your view, were most of the mistakes down to competence or was there something more sinister? And the difference between incompetence and corruption is a bit like a bad tackle at football. The person who knows is the person who made the tackle. You know, I could be incompetent all day long if you want. What's your sense? My sense was I couldn't work certain things out. There were certain incidents, there were certain inquiries which didn't appear to be progressed. There were certain um, parts of the investigation that really didn't make any sense to me at all. But I never investigated whether that was corruption or was it incompetent. In 2005, the government changed the law. It was now possible to try suspects for the same crime twice. Clive Driscoll was put in charge. After years of disappointment, he first had to persuade the Lawrences and the key witness, Stephen's friend, Dwayne Brooks, to confide and trust in him. It's your deeply held belief there were people at senior levels in the Met who were almost hoping this investigation would fail. You felt that pressure. There were certainly people, I think, in, in senior levels in the Met that weren't enthusiastic about the investigation. I certainly felt that. Um, you know, as I've said before, it is a very serious allegation you know, to make, and I don't have evidence that I could present to any tribunal for that, but it's certainly what I felt was that um, people in places I would have expected to have had the enthusiasm didn't. And you were so concerned about that, you even made that complaint to senior officers. I, I, I actually did send an email to um, senior officers explaining that I felt that it, would be, it could be seen. If somebody came behind and actually looked at what was going on, I think they would probably see it as a disruption tactic. So, uh, yes, I did put that in writing. Yeah. David Norris and Gary Dobson were convicted of murder. But still, the handling of the original case continued to challenge the Met's reputation. This year, an independent review found failures and reasonable grounds to suspect corruption. That inquiry asked the Met for full disclosure. Even then, Clive Driscoll says, there were discussions about handing everything over, including a document on covert recording of key witness Dwayne Brooks. You have been told of instances when senior officers have discussed holding back documents. No, no, no that's correct. That is correct. Yeah, and I, I would urge them to revisit that and I'd urge them to think about it and I'd urge them to realise it was the Home Secretary and that the Home Secretary and the Mayor have every right to know what we're doing. You know that very senior officers discussed holding back some documents with lawyers. I, I mean, you could call it a culture. It could be just a mindset that you've got to defend the Metropolitan Police. It's the only reason you have a lawyer there, actually, that to, to defend... Well, well, you don't have to defend the Metropolitan Police Service. If the Home Secretary or the Mayor asks for something, well, you give it to them. But one bad decision around disclosure 
undoes the remarkable work that police officers do up and down the country. And it, it, for me, just be open and honest, warts and all. The Met told us no relevant material was intentionally withheld. Their policy was to be open and transparent, and they're still committed to continuing the Lawrence investigation. Doreen Lawrence still speaks to Clive Driscoll most days. She has little contact with the rest of the Met. He says the relationship is as bad as just after Stephen's death, although he believes there could yet be more convictions. If you were the Lawrence family, would you trust the Met? Uh, if I was the Lawrence family, no, I probably wouldn't. How do you feel about that, given the years of hard work, efforts, struggle almost, first of all, to win their trust and then to finally prosecute the case? I actually feel desperately sorry for them. I think that, you know, they as a, they've lost their son, let's never forget that, they lost a much-loved son. Um, and it's almost like they're reliving the trauma of that. For Driscoll, the priority for the police, past and present, must now be complete and total openness. After the Lawrence case tore trust away, removing suspicions is the only path to rebuild. Before you said you weren't sure if it was incompetence or corruption in the early investigation. But what does corruption look like? A uh, question I've asked myself many times, what is corruption? I mean, is corruption going behind a pub somewhere and getting an envelope full of 50 quid notes and uh, that's, you know, corruption? Or is corruption that you don't go down a certain path, you don't follow a certain inquiry, and therefore you make someone very happy that you haven't followed that inquiry, and therefore your next promotion is easier for you, your CV looks a bit more glamorous, um, by the time you finish your career and at the end of your pension, you could have earned considerably more than what you'd ever stuff in an envelope. Uh, so what is corruption? And my, my concern is that uh, the result for the grieving family or the victim or for justice is exactly the same, is that justice has been thwarted. And that can't happen at any costs because the reality is that is uh, the rule of law is part of our freedom. Well, Dwayne Brooks, who we saw in that film, is here with us now tonight. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, you'd be forgiven with everything that happened with the Met for not trusting them at all. What was it about Clive Driscoll when he took over the case that was different? Clive Driscoll comes across as a very honest person, down-to-earth, South London person, a um, bit of Cockney every now and again in his language. And for me, he was just completely different from all the other officers that I had dealt with. And so I, I gave him a chance. He said to me, do I know I can crack this case? And I felt, well, let's give him a go. Did you believe him? No, <laughs> I didn't believe him. But he made a tremendous amount of effort to convince me that it can be done. And I had no other choice but to trust him. And Clive and his team came through. And when they did come through, when there were successful convictions in the end, what were your and the Lawrence family's feelings about the man then and about the successful inquiry that he'd brought? I felt the Met should have come out and said, well done, Clive. Well done, Clive, Peter Franklin, and other members of the team. Well done. You have done something that nobody else thought was possible. But it didn't happen. And I'm still baffled as to why the senior members of the Metropolitan Police haven't come out and said thank you to Clive and his team. Why do you think that might be? Well, we've seen from the clip now why it could be, because there were senior officers in the Met who just did not want there to be a conviction in this case. You felt that too? Along the way, yes, up until Clive got involved. Once Clive was involved, um, the communication we had was constant. He kept me up to date about the issues, uh, the problems, and what he needed to do. And for me, it was just a matter of time. And as we saw, we had two convictions. 
No, the Met would say they were always committed to the investigation. They were always committed to trying to get convictions. But now Clive has retired just a matter of weeks ago. Do you believe there is still a prospect of there being more convictions in the case? Without Clive leading the team? No, I don't think it's possible. I think all the work that Clive and his team has done over the past, what, seven, eight years, it's all going to be lost. It's all going to be lost? I don't think the officers who have taken over now are in the same league as Clive and his previous team. I don't think they've got the leadership skills and I don't think they've got the communication skills. Well, on communication, do you talk to them? Would you talk to them? I haven't spoken to any of the new team at the moment. Um, will I speak to them? Of course, because I would like to see more convictions. I would like to see everybody who was involved convicted. Would I be able to trust them? I don't know. Why not? Because the way Clive has been treated is not how I would expect the Metropolitan Police to treat somebody who's just got a conviction, in a conviction where nobody thought was possible. The Met, of course, say that Clive has reached retirement age. He's leaving for perfectly correct reasons. Nothing has gone on in any other way. But do you feel that you would ever be able to trust the force again? Because from what you're suggesting, without him, you just, you just wouldn't. Well, in relation to, to, to the Lawrence case, it would be a bit difficult for me to trust officers who are coming in now because of the way Clive has been treated. But if we were talking about the Metropolitan Police in a whole, well, of course I trust them. We have thousands and thousands of rank-and-file officers that do a great job day in, day out, and they protect us all in this fabulous city. So on, on the Lawrence case, it's a bit different from generally the Metropolitan Police, who I do support, who I do trust. What do you feel about documents, including those relating to you being bugged during those early days of the inquiry? What do you feel about those being withheld? The Met says absolutely not intentionally. <laughs> But what do you feel about that? Saddened, but I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. But it's, it's astonishing that the Home Secretary can order an inquiry, order the Met to disclose all relevant information, and the Met take legal advice and do the opposite. So we've heard in that piece that the Met say they're open, they want to be transparent. Fine, let's be transparent. Publish the legal advice tomorrow. Let's see how transparent the Met really are. The Met says it is still committed to this investigation. They've still got resources on it. They've got that new team they talked about. Do you believe they are committed to it? You're not talking to them yet. Well, I, ha I haven't seen any evidence of that. So at this moment in time, I don't believe so. The, on the only evidence I've seen around this investigation is the way they've treated Clive Driscoll and his team, a team that secured a conviction that we all believed wasn't possible. And briefly, Dwayne, how often, how much do you still think about what happened all those years ago? Well, it will stay with me forever. Um, it was a night that I wish didn't happen. If I had the chance to turn back time, of course, I would turn back time and make different decisions on that night. But it's happened. Um, we have to move on. We have to be successful to show that even though you do have bad times in your life, you can move on and be successful. So we're trying to do that. But also, the message needs to go out to other victims of crime that even though things may be hard, at the end of the day, justice is still possible. Dwayne Brooks, thanks so much Thank indeed you. for coming in and talking to us tonight. Thank you.